criminal want witnesses to keep silent. But silence comes at a price. Sometimes the price of silence is fear and threats. The witnesses is threatened to keep their mouth shut. Sometimes the price of silence is fear and intimidation. Maybe important position, maybe a job. But when the witness is a little girl, only eight years old, has no job, has no position. And she's been raped by an adult, a respected leader of the community. Not just a respected leader of the community, but in a place you call refuge, a place of peace. What the price of, a sil of, the, of silence for that eight-year-old victim was a price of silence for her mother. It was a sacrifice of some sort. In this case, the witness is also the victim. Her name is Destiny. She's in the fifth grade. The crime took place early one morning when Destiny was on her way to school. She stopped by the house that her aunt and the bishop live. The bishop of Destiny's church. Her aunt was out, but the bishop was there. When the bishop told Destiny to lie down, she did. After all, she was only eight years old, and she grew up in the church. What happened next was pain and horror. It changed Destiny's life forever. She was shocked that she didn't tell anyone, not her mother, not the teachers. She went to school. She staggered through her classes in a daze. A few days later, the bishop came to Destiny's house. He paid a call to her mother. The bishop brought Destiny a present, a pink bicycle with a red bow. Destiny said, thank you but she knew it was being paid to keep the attack silent. The bishop held his arms open for a hug, but destiny did not go to him. Her mother scolded, destiny, what's wrong with you? The bishop just gave you a gift. So destiny went to the bishop. She did not want to, but she allowed him to put his arms around her. And the, and the bishop pulled Destiny close and whispered in her ear, you better not ever tell a soul what happened between you and me. For Destiny, that was a price of silence, was a threat, and a pink bicycle with a red bow. Over the next few years, Destiny was raped again, again, and again by the bishop and two other men, one being the deacon of the church, the other being Destiny's mother's husband. They always came to Destiny's apartment when her mother was working at the church. They knew Destiny was alone how could Destiny's mother not know what was going on? Well, Destiny's mother was a volunteer of the church. The church was the center of her life. She thrived on praise from the church community. 
Destiny's mother did not know because she did not want to know. Finally, Destiny broke down and told her mother about the rapes. Her mother accused Destiny of lying and she gave the child a severe beating. When Destiny was 10 years old, she gave birth to her baby, the deacon's baby. One year later, when Destiny was 11, her mother gave permission for Destiny to marry the deacon. Her mother did this to protect the deacon. Destiny's mother even made her wedding dress, her veil, and her cake. I'm sorry to tell you, it gets worse. All of this was planned long in advance. Remember, Destiny had her baby one full year prior to her getting married. But a year before the marriage, the birth certificate of that baby already had Destiny listed as Mrs. The certificate gave her the deacon's last name and not her own. Obviously, some state officials was in on this. You may wonder why the deacon was not arrested. How could it be legal for the government to issue a marriage license for a child? Where did this horror take place? In some faraway country? No. Right here in the United States of America, in the state of Florida. You see, destiny is the name I gave myself many years later when I wrote the chapter in my book. I would not burden you with this story, except that there is a problem is much, much bigger than just one person. Oh yes, child marriage was against the law in Florida at that time, but there are loopholes in the law. One loophole says child marriage was legal if a parent gave permission for the child to marry. Another loophole is preteen pregnancy. Another, mar another loophole for marriage is the judge give consent. In other words, raping and impregnating a child become licensed to go on raping and impregnating a child under the cover of the law. At, at the time this happened to me, child marriage was legal in every state. Today, at this moment, child marriage is still legal in 47 states. The same loophole exists in many states. Every year, this evil system winks and nods as child brides are married off. This system looks the other way as children are forced to be married to men two, three, and four times their age. This is a system of legal rape. I hate to tell you how big this problem really is. From 2000 to 2010, there were more than 260,000 child marriages in America. That is more than 500 marriages child marriages a day, every day of the year in the United States. In medicine, when you fight a disease, there are two strategies, prevention and cure. In my case, there was no prevention. As for a cure, I don't know if there is a complete cure, but I had to try to heal myself as a child 
when I got pregnant again and again. For many years, there were no one I could talk with. I had no way to release my pain again and again. I would tell myself, this will pass. But for as long time, it did not pass. By the age of 17, I had six children. That same year, I divorced my rapist. I got married. What kind of a person does abuse person marry? Another abuser. It is a repeated cycle. I went through a couple of marriages and divorces the same way. By the time I was 27, I had nine children. At one point, certain members of the church wanted to take my children from me, and I refused. I was their mother. I brought them into the world. I felt responsible to protect my children from what I knew had had happened to me could happen to them. As an adult that I wanted to protect all children in addition to my own, I asked myself, what can I do? This is where prevention came in. In 2012, I set up a foundation to help abused children. We established a hotline that they can call to get help, or just someone to talk to. That same year, I wrote a book about my story. It was therapy for me, a warning and awareness for others. I wanted to do more. I was still living in Florida, so in 2013, I went to the state capitol. I knocked on the doors to all the state leaders and lawmakers, law changers. I told them my story. I said, will you work with me to change the law? Nobody wanted to help. Finally, a woman in the House representative said, yes, I will sponsor your bill. When I got her support, the tears rolled down my cheek. Our bill passed in the House, but it died in the Senate. I was crushed. I felt like the weight of the world was sitting on my chest. But the next year, I came back to try again. My biker in the House did not want to sponsor the bill again. Her feelings were, we tried, we lost. Our bill was not a winner, so she was moving on to other things. I walked around in circles with my hand on my forehead. What do I do next? I went back knocking on doors. One day I knocked on the door of Senator Lauren Book. Lauren and I had a special connection she made it her personal cause to end child marriage in the state of Florida. And as of July 1st of this year, our bill became Florida, Florida law. <laughs> Almost every bill gets changed on the way to becoming a law. That happened to our bill too. We wanted the law to say that you must be 18 to get married, period. 18 is when an adult in every way in the state of Florida. But the lawmakers changed the legal marriage to 17. If facts are true, there has to be a financial stability, parents in agreement, two years or less in, difference, in age difference, marriage counseling, and usually the girl has to be pregnant or a single mother. Florida law is not perfect. 
but it is a giant step in the right direction. And now we're looking for the price of other kinds of silence. We were the teach where were the teachers who knew their students were being impregnated all these decades? Why did the social worker did not speak up? Why did the churches did not speak out? What did they get in return for their silence? They say the only thing needed for Trump of evil is that good people do nothing. Silence helped the criminal. It cannot continue. What made the difference in Florida? Why did our bill pass? I think the reason is simple. Three victims were willing to come forward and break the silence, myself and two lawmakers. We have more work to do. It is time to enforce the law. In Florida, the police, our public health agencies, and the media are coming together. They work to raise public awareness. They share data. They take active steps to protect children. But we will not stop there in Florida. We are reaching out across the country. We are touching, we are in touch with the FBI. We are talking with groups for children and children's rights. New laws against child marriage has been passed in New Jersey and Delaware. And we're also working now in Georgia and Louisiana to ban child marriage. I do not say any of this is easy. Yes, there is a price for silence, but there is also a cost for speaking out. It's hard enough for victims to talk about their suffering in private. It's even harder to share painful memories in public. For most victims, it's important to talk about what happened to you in front of committees and reporters and cameras, microphones, audiences. But sadly, child marriage does not seem real to lawmakers until they say, they see and hear someone who says, yes, it's for real. It happened to me. This is what it takes. Personal witnesses make lawmakers pay attention. When voters get angry, it lights a fire under them. At last, they agree to do something about it. If victims and survivors cannot speak for themselves, I'm ready to speak on their behalf. I'm ready to shine a light in the darkness for as long as it takes. And I'm not alone. Every day, more and more activists are shining that light with me. We will not stop until child marriage is wiped out in all 50 states. Lives depend on this. Lives depend on all of us to break the silence and to speak the truth. Thank you.